And decades ago, in the 1960s, a Prairie Village woman was part of a small group now known by several names like the Mercury 13 or fellow lady astronaut trainees. 41 Action News anchor Lindsay Shively sat down with one member of the group NASA now calls Trailblazers. For Sarah Ratley, it's a wide, wide world. Flying is freedom. You get things in their perspective or if you really had a bad day, you can kick the rudders and nothing happens. The 85 year old still loves the feeling of flight. When was the last time that you flew? Oh, probably a couple weeks ago. You're still flying? Yes. Ratley earned a degree in mathematics with minors in physics and chemistry and earned her private pilot's license in 1950. She would have loved to fly for a living, but she says women weren't supposed to be commercial pilots or airline pilots in those days. It was just continually discouraging women pilots. So we all banded together and stuck together, said the heck with it. And someone had to get the ball rolling, get it started to break that glass ceiling. And for a moment in the 1960s, she thought not even the sky was the limit. I got a phone call from the Lovelace uh, Foundation on a Saturday, and they said, can you be here tomorrow? In the midst of the space race, Dr. William Randolph Lovelace developed the physical test to select NASA's first astronauts. Project Mercury was the United States' first man in space program, but Lovelace gave a group of women the same physical tests. We were a bunch of women pilots who had dreams. We wanted to go where no one had been before. Ratley, then Sarah Gorlick, was one of 13 in his Women in Space program who passed those same astronaut fitness tests. We were just trying to say, women can do this too. Do not hold them back because of their sex. And since no human had been in space yet, those tests were intense. When they put the ice water in the ear to give you vertigo, they said, find a spot on the wall, stare at that spot. Testing was extremely excruciating. It was the most thorough physical I've had in my life. Some call the women the Mercury 13, like this recent Netflix documentary. Even though the women were never officially a part of Project Mercury or even a part of NASA, NASA still calls them trailblazers. Ratley and retired last year and now I travels am, to speak and empower young girls in STEM fields and beyond. They can truly follow their dreams. We tried to follow our dreams and kept pushing. Lindsay Shively, 41 Action News. An American woman didn't fly in space until Sally Ride did so in 1983. Then in 1995, Ratley calls this moment wonderful. Astronaut Eileen Collins became the first woman to pilot the space shuttle and Collins invited the ladies to watch her take off.